Hey guys, TJ Schwartz here. Welcome back to the shop and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking about knife sheaths. I'm actually making some knife sheaths today if this goes as well as I'm hoping. I've made quite a few Kydex sheaths. My dad makes my leather sheaths. My dad's a full-time leather worker. He's been a saddle maker for 40 years, 40 plus some odd years or something like that. So he does a great job. I mean, like he hooks me up with the best leather sheaths I think I've ever seen. So um, that's one option for the knives that I make. This is the knife. Uh, it's called the, the Overland and it's a camping. It's designed like with a little bit of a kitchen knife mimicry to it so that it, you can still use it as a full-blown camping knife, bushcraft, all that good stuff, meat processing, hunting, all that good stuff. But it has that kind of negative blade drop so that it cuts, you know, on a flat surface without having to worry about like a guard or something catching first. And so it's like a little bit of a food prep, camping, hunting, just kind of a general outdoor use knife. And uh, the sheath I think that my dad makes for it is perfect. This is, again, an option that I have set up on my website for this knife. And uh, as you can see, what I'm mostly talking about today is getting it to sit the right height on the belt is an important part of uh, sheath design. And with the leather sheath, as you can see, the belt height is about here. And so you've got uh, two and a half inches sticking above the belt. And that's, that's pretty appropriate if you ask me, because you want to be able to grab it and there has to be enough for you to be able to reach it. And you don't want it so far down on your thigh that it's kind of poking you down there and you don't want it obviously too high up because it's going to poke you in the gut or in the ribs and especially if you're backpacking hiking camping and it's on your hip that's a problem um, and so for the kydex version that i make in house i'm kind of taking all this into account i'm taking you know the application of the knife into account what it's used for when i design the sheath so i'm actually wanting to improve this sheath design a lot today so that's why i'm making the video i want to kind of walk you through my mentality and i haven't actually made the improved version yet i'm just literally you know free forming this right now um, but this is just the template for my older version and for the version that's currently being sold i don't have a finished one that hasn't been sold and shipped out so this is just going to have to be the uh, talking piece here so um, as you can see the knife would sit in like this and there's a lot of handle stick out compared to the leather. There, all the retention's happening right down here, and you've got you know substantial handle stick out. And one of the common ways of mounting this sheath and what I've recommended to a lot of people is a tech lock. Now, a tech lock was designed by uh, Bob Trozola, and he's an amazing knife designer. They call him the father of the modern tactical knife. And by that, I think they're referring to the folder, father of the modern tactical folder but he designed this as an application for both gun holsters and knife sheaths where you mount it on just like that. And the way this works is it's actually like a folding apparatus where, here I'll show you, you open it up, it's got a little safety that you kick over and then you squeeze this in, you open it up, you can actually configure this with these spacers to have the exact belt height that you have set up. Um, and that way when you snap it shut, and put it on the sheath and you don't have to unsnap it to put it on your belt you can still feed the belt through the slot but when you have it on your sheath and that looks like the right way up um, that belt would be very 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 tightly fit because you move the spacers to be a perfect fit and this is really good for situations where you don't want any movement in the sheath i would argue that this is really good for a tactical design um, it could even be used to mount it somewhere else other than just on your hip um, you can even put it horizontally. I think that's where this uh, this design really shines because if you had it horizontal on your belt, like on your lower back or something for kind of, like I said, more of a tactical design, it wouldn't want to rock very much because of how snug that would fit on your belt. And I think it's great, uh, but I've, I've kind of started to think this might not be the perfect solution for this sheath. And that's just because of what the knife's used for. Um, again, as low as this sits and as much as that sticks up, I think that's a lot of knife that's going to be poking you in the stomach. And so recently I've gone to this. And so this is a, a pretty inexpensive holster slash um, knife sheath clip. It's made in the USA. I really like it. And it's got a little bit of spring to it so you can open it up and you could slip it over the belt while it's already on your hip. You don't have to undo your buckle or whatever. And what I've been doing is putting it right there. And as you can see, the handle stick up is what I'm looking for. Now, you might immediately notice it's not centered necessarily. So putting this on your belt like this actually works pretty dang good. And when I put it 
on the on the front of my pants on the on the belt itself and slide it to my first belt loop there the way that it sticks off the back of my hip actually is pretty comfortable and it works pretty good and i'll show you a picture i'll upload a picture of that since i don't have a finished sheath now that being said i still think i would love it even more if this was centered now having this clip centered with the right handle stick out on this sheath i think is the right application for this particular knife and that's what I'm going to attempt to do today. Now there's a couple struggles with it and I'm going to go over that and show you how I'm going to solve those struggles. Now of course I got a cup of coffee here. It's morning when this video is being shot. Quick little side note, totally off topic, but I drink coffee all day long. I pretty much chug it. And if you're like me and you've ever had issues where you just feel like you drink a little bit too much coffee and you maybe have some weird energy anomalies at the end of the day, what I've done to resolve that is I do 50% caffeinated, 50% decaf when I put it in the pot. And it means I can just chug this stuff like water and it keeps my energy a lot more stable. So just a little functional side note. But <clears throat> anyway, the, uh, the problem, the main problem with putting it right in the center, you can see immediately is that you have to use screw hardware to attach this to the sheath. And if it was screwed to it, you'd have screw heads inside the sheath. Now, with this being custom form molded and whatnot, the knife would be not able to fit even if I were to just do it to an existing sheath. And so I could clearance it a little bit, but also keeping the retention correct and not having the blade wiggle while this sheet, while this is clearance for this clip to be screwed onto it is potentially a little bit of a challenge. <clears throat> and I want to do it repeatedly because I don't want to waste Kydex. I don't want to sit all day and mess around with it every time I make a sheath. So that's where the power of 3D printing comes in. So the idea that I have for this is if you have your knife here, this is a cool view from the inside, um, sitting like this, as you can see, it's snug and flush on this side. If the clip is mounted here, if I were to 3D print a handle scale that matches this handle identically, but had, um, two little lumps, uh, and this would be designed in CAD and 3D printed, there would be enough, hopefully, clearance for the screw head from the inside if the Kydex was formed around those lumps and then I drilled the holes through the actual bump itself. That way this would sit just a little bit off and then they would be unobtrusive, so if you didn't run the clip, you'd just have two little bumps right there and I think it would be fine, like if you still wanted to run this. Um, but I think this is the right way to do it. and so. I'm going to start working on designing that scale setup and 3D printing it today and I'm going to show you how that works. Um, let's jump over to the computer. One quick note I'll add about the leather sheath. If you notice that darker color around the throat and around the tip, that is simply oil that hasn't fully dissipated yet. I oiled it last night and then left it in a cold garage and oil doesn't dissipate very well in cold temperatures. So the color will actually be very, very consistent. It'll, it'll just diffuse in there and be really nice. I also offer a black version of the same sheath where I actually dye it black. And uh, there, it's got my dad's signature logo right there. Um, so I don't know if you noticed that, but just one little disclaimer. So I'm sitting here at my computer. This is Fusion 360. It's a program by Autodesk. It's a really good 3D modeling program. I also run SolidWorks, but I've been running anything that I'm making in-house in Fusion because it has integrated CAM, which is computer-aided machining. Not super relevant today, but this is what I'm doing. So I've got this handle scale right here. I've got a little error down here in the timeline for any fusion onlookers. Uh, that's because I'm editing out of context. Um, but anyway, I digress. I'm going to show you how I've modified this to be the 3D printed part that I'm looking for. So first and foremost, I extruded after tons of measuring and just locating and trying to get everything right. I've uh, drawn a sketch that locates where those two bosses would be, those two like little dimples that I mentioned. And I've extruded them. And then I've done some like filleting to kind of strengthen it a little bit so it doesn't break. And then also um, I extruded a hole through the middle. Now I'm hoping that after I mold this, there'll be a dimple. So the Kydex, you can imagine when it's hot is just really soft and it's laying over the top of this. And when the foam presses down on it, it's supposed to form to all these different shapes. And if there's a hole in the middle, my hope is that it'll create a little dimple in the middle of these where I can put a drill 
and the drill will just go right to the center where that dimple is and go right through um, when I'm finishing the kydex up. Put a fillet there to improve that. I'm actually also, now that I'm looking at it, going to add this fillet to this here. I'm trying to get the oh, add plus. There we go. I'm going to add a little fillet there because it doesn't need to be a 90 degree corner. I am leaving these at 90 degrees because I want the kydex to leave a perfectly flat surface in there so the screw head is clearanced. Um, they stick up a total of an eighth of an inch above it. I measured the actual screw, it's like 90 thou, so it's not quite an eighth of an inch, but I don't want when you're sliding the handle in to have any any at all risk of like scratching your handle on those screws. So this is just an experiment, guys. The nice thing about 3D printing is I can adjust this and make more. And a little side note, like CAD is kind of where I've kind of uh, formed most of my experience in the knife world. And so um, one of the tips and tricks that I tell a lot of people that ask about CAD is, Whenever you configure something like the location of these circles, do a lot of dimensioning and, and think it through, like where should the dimensioning be? Because I could have just drawn two circles and maybe dimensioned how far they are apart and then like by eye just dragged them to where I want them to be. And that would be fine. But I want this CAD file to be modifiable. So like if this doesn't work, I want to be able to come in here and say, let's say this angle, it's a very slight angle of these two holes in relation to the handle. If it results in the sheath not sitting vertically on my hip the way I want it. I have a angle parameter right here. So it's 92 degrees. So it's two degrees off of vertical. And if I wanted to come back in and say, oh, you know, it wasn't the right angle, I could go 89 degrees and it would change that quickly. So, and if you were to come in and you didn't have dimensions and you just kind of clicked and dragged this a little bit, if you said, Oh, the first time it was too far one way and the second time it's too far the other way coming back you have no way of knowing any quantifiable amount what actually changed and so with this if i tried 92 didn't like it 89 didn't like it could try 91 having numbers associated with different aspects of this is important that also includes this so this dimension controls the depth so like the handle stick out simply by changing this if i did you know 0.7 instead of 0.65 that's gonna change the depth of the knife in the pocket. And so if I have it at 0.65 to begin with, if I come back in here and say, I want it a quarter inch deeper, I add a quarter inch to that dimension and boom, instantly it's changed. And so designing CAD files to have this sort of setup is really important in my opinion for reiterative design. And so that's how I've approached it here. Now I'm gonna 3D print this and I'm gonna just give you a quick overview of how I would go about that. Please ignore the really poor lighting. I'm in my office. I've got my big light back here just so it's not a total dungeon. And as you can see, I'm running a slicer here. That 3D model I export as an STL, bring it into a slicer. And the slicer creates two dimensional layers out of the whole thing, exactly as you'd expect when it's called a slicer. And then I export it over to my printer and I'll show you that. Um, but the way a printer works, it just prints every single layer really quickly. Now, first off, I'm gonna show you the two printers that I run. I've got this printer right here, which is a Prusa FDM printer. It's got a big coil of, it's kind of like a hot glue gun on steroids. It's, you know, CNC controlled, so it can print every layer, almost like a hot glue gun, printing a 2D layer, rising, printing another layer. And the problem with this in this application is this is a really reliable printer and I love it, but this stuff is a thermoplastic. So the heat of the Kydex would probably just disintegrate that plastic. It would just melt. So what I'm going to use is actually my other printer over here, which is the Anycubic Photon Mono. This is pretty new to me, but this uses a resin. It's kind of like, I don't know if it compares to epoxy chemically, but if you can imagine any kind of resin, but this particular one hardens with UV light. And so there's actually a UV light below this uh, bath of resin right here. This comes down and it prints upside down. So the part will be stuck to this as it rises out. So the, the UV light projects each layer onto the bottom of this panel as it dips down into the resin. Um, a little bit, you know, into the weeds, but this is what I'm gonna use because it's not thermoplastic. It should be resistant to heat to the level that I'm looking for. Just a quick side note on these tools. If this seems kind of like above your pay grade, maybe you're a knife maker and you do everything by hand, you don't have a CNC, but you kind of think this stuff is interesting. Keep in mind, this stuff is so accessible nowadays. That printer I just showed you, I think it's like 
two hundred dollars on Amazon. I'm, I kid you not, it's two hundred bucks, and it's a great printer. It's really fast. For example, the print time that it's estimating for this is twenty minutes. So I can reiterate it extremely fast. I mean, you can't, you know, cut out pieces of styrofoam or plastic and hot glue them onto a handle like faster than this thing can print. Um, and then Fusion, you can get a free version. So definitely give it a try, guys. If you haven't experienced this stuff, it's great. As you can see, it's lowering. It's gonna lower itself down into the actual vat of resin there. You'll see it kind of submerge. And once it contacts the bottom surface, it's gonna give us a readout. So that's the first layer. It's hardening one tiny, that layer is roughly two thousandths of an inch thick. And the first couple layers kind of take a while. I think it's like 40 seconds of, of uh, actual like whatever hardening time. And then each layer after that usually is about two seconds. So there's our finished print. It's covered in liquid resin. Time to clean it up in some rubbing alcohol. Also adding extra UV light via this UV light turntable will give it uh, just a harder finish. Overall make it more durable. So I'll do that real quick and show you the finished part. So it's going for a little spin. That's actually UV light. The yellow housing filters it so it looks green. It'd be purple if it didn't have the housing on it. Spend about five minutes spinning around like that to get a little extra hardening going on. I think it printed really good. We'll just have to see how it fits on the knife. So I'm at the bench here. I've got it mounted up. Fits on there really nice. Those printers are super high resolution, so it looks really good. I can use the existing scale on the other side. Now, for a test, I can kind of mock up how this clip is going to sit angle and positioning wise. Fits really nice. It's basically what I'm looking for. So time to form some Kydex and see how I like it. Just real quick guys, before I dive into the Kydex part of this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, or just one of those three things. It would help a ton. Obviously YouTube has this big algorithm that no one understands. The one thing we do know, one of those three things, a little bit of interaction, any help, it makes a big difference in my overall, like, uh, you know, just reach for the whole channel. So if you could do that real quick, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. So this video isn't really like a Kydex technique video. I wouldn't say I'm like a super expert with Kydex, but this is just how I do it. I've got my new scale on here. This is actually a different knife. It's uh, This knife's for Lucas Burnley, actually. He placed an order, one of my good friends. Um, so shout out to him. But <clears throat> I've got one layer of masking tape on each side. That's gonna It's gonna add a buffer between the actual bevel and the Kydex itself in the finished sheath so that it's not scratching itself on its way in and out. I've got a piece of plastic just wedged onto the tip. It's actually a plastic coat hanger piece that is going to create the drain hole. Um, so I set this aside and have it ready. I've got a griddle that I bought off Amazon for like 35 bucks. It's okay. It's definitely better than a toaster oven. I've tried that. Didn't really like it. The heat area consistency on this isn't great. There's hot and cool spots. I want a JB weld, a quarter inch mild steel plate on here so that it has a better heat sink and I think it'll get better heat distribution. Um, but as you can see with these gloves on, I can start to feel the temperature here. And uh, I'm looking for a, just a consistency of the material, not necessarily a temperature. I do have a temp reading gun, but I've just found to go by feel is better because actually certain Kydex colors kind of take this uh, leathery feel at a little bit different temperatures. So I just go by feel. Now I'm getting pretty close to ready. I'm gonna see if I can catch this on video the way I do it. So I've got a, two foam pieces inside of two steel plates. I bought this from knifekits.com. Pretty affordable. Some people use like plywood and two by fours. I've had good luck with this. So in looking at this, I'm feeling pretty good about it. You want um, this kind of consistency. You don't want to burn it. It'll start to burn and blister on the bottom. And, uh, but you, it needs to be able to form well. So it's just a little bit trial and error. You'll start to get a feel for what you're looking for, but that visual right there. I would compare it a little bit to like a craft single, like a craft cheese, um, something like that. So anyway, put one piece on, put the knife on, make sure it's positioned correctly, put the other piece on, nice and gentle, close this guy up. And I use clamps. It's not as fast as I'd like. 
I think there's a better way to do this. In fact, I might use my big hydraulic press next, um, but I just haven't started doing that yet. And I clamp it. I clamp it with these clamps literally as tight as I can get it. And then I do one clamp on this other side. As you can see, this should be a faster process. I should probably use my press and compress it a lot faster. But this is what we're going to do now. It does work. I literally max out these clamps and uh, let her sit longer than you think you need to. Um, I've had an issue where I get too impatient and I pull it out too early and then the kydex feels like kind of warm but you think it's done and it'll slowly warp out of being flat. And so just leave it in here for quite a while. I don't know, maybe 15 minutes or something usually. Look at that guys. That's even better definition than I was picturing. I'm so happy with that. So you can see the drain hole, how that works, pretty simple. One dead giveaway on if it's cooled enough is when you pull it out, it should be, it could be warm, but it should be rock solid. If you can deflect like a corner, if you can grab it and kind of bend it, it's too early. So make sure it's like fully hardened by the time you take it out. So I've traced out, if you can see it with, with a, just a pencil, where the shape of this is going to be. I've actually used this stencil before and I had to modify it to fit over these new lugs. I'm going to make a new one eventually, but I'm also going to mark hole positions. These are spaced correctly for all the different attachments. I'll mark those. I have to drill holes first so that once I separate these, they'll always be able to index back together. So drilling these holes is really nothing special. Um, I would use a drill bit that has a keen sharp point. I think they're like pilot drill bits or something like that. That way that first puncture is precision on the dot and then it can cut from there. If you use your standard drill bits, they'll wander. Well, that's, but a normal drill bit will just wander around. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Oh, by the way, quarter inch hole for these eyelets. Once again, always drill the holes before you separate the kydex. And then also, it's actually easier to bandsaw the perimeter out while it's still stuck together as long as you're able to be careful and not damage the knife. As The longer it's stuck together and the more you can get done that way, I feel like the more efficient this process is. Now, this is where somebody might mock me because I don't have a bandsaw yet. I'm trying to figure out how to organize my shop to be able to fit it. I literally use a jigsaw to rough this in and finish it on the grinder. It's pretty awkward and uh, I don't recommend it. So super bummer moment, guys. Like I said, horrible way to do it. Super awkward. My jigsaw jumped out and stabbed the sheath, probably ruining it. This is just going to have to be a prototype, and if it works, then I'll make another one. But yeah, I'm going to be getting a bandsaw ASAP. Anyway, I'm here at the grinder. I got my little work rest. 60 grit. This is kind of a worn, older 60 grit belt. I'm going to just chase this down close to that line. And then I'm, I'm going to do the handles, uh, do the front handle that has the tracing really close. And then I'm going to eyelet them together. Of course, I still have to drill these holes, but eyelet them together and then dial in that perimeter the last little bit while they're already attached. I wanted to mock it up before I finish the sheath. You can see inside there what's going on. They're recessed. So I'll figure out here in a bit if that's enough recess. It looks like there's enough definition in this sheath that I could keep going. If I wanted to re-3D print it, you can see right there what it looks like. I think it's clean from the outside. I think that once the sheath is done, that's gonna be a pretty good look. So I put the other piece on here, the other piece of Kydex, and I put the eyelets in it. And then I ground with that 60 grit belt to where the whole thing matches, including the throat and everything. And 60 grit is not a final finish. I'm just doing test fitting right now. So one of the things I was curious about that I wanted to experiment with is how hard it would be to screw this clip on while it's assembled. And it's doable. There's a little bit of difficulty to it, but it does work. As you can see, the, the further screw is pretty far from the opening. So I have to kind of slide it in with my finger, push it through, and then I can screw in from the outside while I'm holding it from the inside. It works. It's not something you have to take on and off. So this is a good system, I think. One other note, it, the hardware kit for these clips, it came with this rubber kind of gasket. 
and I'm assuming that should go between the kydex and the clip. That's the way I have it set up and I'll be shipping them that way. If there's a reason why it should be under the screw head, not under the clip, please comment. If you know a lot about kydex or if you make a holster or, or something, please tell me. Um, but for now, that's the way I'm doing it. So now for the sheath fitment on the knife. So I've already designed the sheath to work really well. And so I already know that it works, but it took some experimentation. The shape of this opening here is important. Now, when I push it in, I'm, I'm looking for a clack, like a loud kind of audible clack that has been put in position. And so that's good. And I'm not getting any wiggle. Um, I'm, I still have the tape on the blade and the, I just I don't want to scratch it while I'm messing with it here, but I'm not getting any wiggle. That was a really good clack. I was worried about wiggle because I was worried that there, I wasn't going to get this much definition on those little bosses. And if there wasn't enough definition, I was worried it wasn't going to hold the blade. I can see that's absolutely no issue. There's tons of contact. This blade has nowhere to go. Now, if I wanted to tune that clack, I would grind more material from this area right here, which is where the bite is on the actual front edge of the handle. And the more I grind away, the less contact there would be and the less, you know, bite. And uh, so that's how you can tune a sheath. And I, I think it is correct the way I have it here. So a side note, the way I designed the sheath and the way I think a lot of sheaths should be designed is that ejection from the sheath should take place from the force of your thumb. Now that means when you grab the handle, either on your belt or just holding it like this, you put your thumb on this ramp right here and you push with your thumb and that is what releases the knife. And it's kind of hard from this angle, but if you can imagine pushing the knife out with your thumb. And the reason that I would recommend that is I've seen so many people this is surprisingly common where they grab the sheath and they put their finger right here because it's the the place that they feel like they can get a hold of it and they pull the knife out and can you set you know you can you see what's going to happen if i did that so don't grab the sheath and pull and you know swing a knife apart like that push with your thumb and that's where all the force should come from like that and uh that's why the thumb ramp is important so overall i'm super happy with this guys holy cow I'm gonna put it on my belt actually and show you how that looks. Hopefully you can see that. So that spring clip, I can either thread a belt through it or I can spring it over my belt. So check it out, that's that's the ride height. I can slide it around. I, I think that angle is right and all that good stuff. I can pull it out perfectly. And the other thing I'm looking for is I don't want the knife to be contacting the screws on the inside. I don't want to be scratching it. So I've been kind of maintaining an eye on that. And I don't think it is even possible to contact them, which is the goal. Um, so honestly, this is going to work great. I might 3D print more of these so that I can have like all of my knives uh, with these on them. Because oftentimes I'll like put one in the press while that one's cooling, I'll be working on the other knife, and so I need multiple of these. But overall, guys, holy cow. That's sweet. That is sweet. That's the way I'm going to ship all the knives moving forward. So if you select the Kydex option on my website, this is what it's going to look like. I showed you the leather option. Heck yeah, guys. Heck yeah. So you could you could attach anything this way. You could even take like the tech lock. It normally is attached and kind of offset. You could put it on the center. You could, you know, actually, um, well, I guess these bolt holes don't line up with those two holes, so you couldn't use the tech lock directly onto those bosses. Um, they're just not the same. But if you're doing this for yourself, you could attach just about anything. So the other side point is, like I said, you could remove the clip. You could still put this on there. You would have those little humps, but I don't think that's too bad. But anyway, I am going to show you real quick before the end of this video what uh what i do to finish the actual edge of the sheath like again <laughs> this is a reject sheath but i just want to show you what i do so i'll get to that and uh yeah so for final edge dressing like i like i said this is a, a worn 60 grit belt on the belt sander i use 320 grit sandpaper now i could use a 320 grit belt over there on the belt sander but i would result in a perfectly 90 degree finish and what I found is if I do it by hand, I actually dome it just a tiny bit and it breaks the edges a little bit. The main thing you have to worry about is don't wrap the paper around to the point where you accidentally scuff up all your eyelets. Um, but if you've done a good job getting those two pieces parallel, it only takes a little bit of sanding and you'll just feel that 60 grit finish just disappear. I mean, literally 
like that much on it on any given surface and you can see it looks really light colored but once i oil this whole sheath with a little wd-40 it'll all match um, but i just go around and do this guy and uh doesn't take very long just a minute or two to go around the perimeter and then you have a finished sheath So I think that about does it guys. That's a finished sheath. I'm so excited to carry one of these. I want to go camping. I want to use this exact setup. This is pretty much my dream setup for a sheath. Honestly, wow. I can't believe that 3D printing process and the way that I, I did that, that it worked the first time. Usually it doesn't happen like that. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to sign off. Please like, comment, subscribe, interact with the video. Help me out with the YouTube algorithm. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Catch you later.